age group which is more attracted towards drug abuse is the most vulnerable age group that is adolescent but they they think like this in a state of they are in a state of your transmitter dopamine is released dopamine now comes into the synapse this cocaine it blocks there are different mechanisms but it can block the transporter which can transport the dopamine back into the neuron so what is going to My dear students, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to Amrina Maharaj Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about a very important topic that's called drug abuse. You can also call it substance abuse. This topic falls in class 12 syllabus. The chapter in which this topic comes is human health and diseases. It's a very important topic for Uh, students who are preparing for competitive examinations as well okay now my dear students let us start first of all with this term drug which we generally call a medicine also now what is a drug basically drug is a substance which is prescribed by a doctor to a patient if a patient comes to a doctor then the doctor performs the diagnosis and all what the individual or the patient is suffering from and then the doctor prescribes some medications and those medications have a reason either the individual is suffering from some physiological problem maybe there are some problems in the person's excretory system maybe in the cardiovascular system maybe in the nervous system depends upon what sort of problem a patient has accordingly the doctor prescribes the medication so there is a reason behind uh, why the doctor prescribes that particular substance to a patient so any substance which is basically used to modify here what sort of modification is basically improvement modify the physiological systems which i told you either maybe the problem lies with the excretory system for that purpose the drug is prescribed or the problem lies with the cardiovascular system of the individual for that the drug or medicine is prescribed or the person is suffering from some pathological state maybe some uh, person is suffering from some infection and antibiotics are prescribed to that individual so those medicines or we call those substances drugs so drug is a substance which is used to modify the physiological systems the physiological systems of the patient or the pathological state of the patient so that if there is some physiological problem that could be eliminated or if there is some pathological problem that could be eliminated moreover if the person is suffering from any psychological problem person is suffering from any sort of mood disorder for those things even uh, psychiatrists uh, prescribe the drugs now the problem is when the person starts taking the drug for other than clinical purposes this was a clinical purpose means here the patient had some problems so doctor prescribed the drugs this is the way clinical process is done but now an individual without any prescription without any uh, advice from the doctor other than any clinical purpose so a person takes the drug we cannot call it now a drug person is performing drug abuse now what is drug abuse is a substance which is used other than their normal clinical purpose that means here there is no problem with that person but still that person is taking the medicine without the prescription of the doctor so other than their normal clinical purpose and since the person is taking the drug without any clinical benefit obviously it is going to impair it's going to damage it's going to lay negative effect on the individual's physical functions the individual's physiological functions even the person's psychological functions could be disrupted 
So you have to understand over here that if a person is suffering from problems, if a person is going through certain problems, maybe a sort of a physiological problem or a psychological problem or a pathological condition, if a practitioner, if a doctor is prescribing the drug to overcome these problems of the patients, then it's a drug. But if the patient is using, now we cannot call him patient, we call him abuser. Because this is an individual which is taking the medicine which is not being prescribed. Now we cannot use even the word medicine because it's not medicine for him, this person. He is taking the drug or she is taking the drug without any recommendation by the doctor and this drug is just taken by this individual to get that sort of kick, to get that sort of temporary false happiness, that to reach to that state of temporary relief in which the person isn't doing nothing, it's he or she is only, uh, you know, laying negative impact on their own body. Their normal physiological functions, their normal psychological functions, their normal physical functions can get impaired. I should say they get impaired rather because of the substance abuse. That's what we call drug abuse. Okay. Now our NCRT talks about three main types of drugs. It talks about opioids, it talks about cannabinoids, it talks about coca alkaloids which you can also call cocaine or coke or crack. Our NCRT gives heroin and smack and morphine as an example of opioid. Now we're going to talk about all of these drugs but we will classify them in a different manner and we will understand about each class in detail. Now my dear students, since uh, now the person is performing drug abuse, the individual is taking these uh, you know, drugs without any clinical uh, prescription, for some period of time, a small amount of the drug is giving that individual a kind of relief, a kind of false happiness. But the next time or after some period of time, the individual has to keep on increasing the dosage of the drug to get the same relief or to get the same level of excitement. Slowly and steadily, the person then leads towards addiction. So drug abuse is slowly going to lead, after some period of time, it's going to lead to drug addiction, where the person continuously in regular intervals of time, depending upon how addicted the individual is, continuously keeps on taking these drugs. The reason why he is uh, taking the drug is to get false happiness or a temporary sort of relaxation. I will make you understand ahead that how that relaxation comes in. But everyone else of us knows from awareness which is uh, you know uh, created on television or newspapers or internet we are being aware about this phenomena that what happens to a drug abuser he just um, probably feels a lot of sleep and in that state of extensive sleep person tends to feel relaxed that's what sort of enjoyment a person gets after he is he or she is abusing drugs but that is then going to lead to addiction that is a very dangerous state after addiction if somebody wants to quit the drugs then the person will uh, you know has to take help from the rehabilitation center because you know the withdrawal symptoms could be very severe now my dear students these three types of the drugs which we which we are going to talk in detail let us remember one thing about these drugs is that they are all psychotropic drugs now the question is what are psychotropic drugs Drugs which affect the nervous system. That means all of these drugs are somewhere going to attack our central nervous system. That means the communication between the neurons is going to be affected by these drugs. If there is something happening to the communication between the neurons, that is definitely going to lay effect on our state of mental health, our state of well-being. We are going to be either feeling extremely sleepy or we are going to feel extremely energetic depending upon what sort of drug we are taking. I hope you are getting this idea somewhere. Now psychotropic drugs, all of these drugs are psych psychotropic drugs. So these drugs affect our nervous system. These psychotropic drugs, they could be divided into four groups. 
Now, based on what? Based on their actions. Now, what type of actions they do, what type of responses they generate, based on that, we can divide these drugs into four groups. So, I have written, based on action, psychotropic drugs are divided into four groups. What are those groups? Okay, the first class of the drugs are called the sedatives and tranquilizers. Sedatives are the drugs which depress reduce rather the activity of our nervous system. So I have written they depress nervous activity and once the nervous activity is depressed we can think of a state of relaxation. That means they produce relaxation in the body, person feels calm, so I have written calmness and the same sedatives can also induce sleep. Now that means the person will feel drowsy after taking these sedatives and will tend to fall asleep. That's why we call these drugs hypnotic drugs because they have caused a sort of hypnosis to the individual. Person has started feeling sleepy. Okay? And the person is feeling relaxed. That's why we call them anti-anxiety drugs because a person can overcome his or her anxiety by taking these drugs because temporarily the drug is going to do what? The drug is going to bring a sort of relaxation state. If a person will feel relaxed, that means the person is now out of the state of anxiety. We call these drugs anti-anxiety drugs or we can call them hypnotic drugs also. Now what do tranquilizers do? They are almost same as sedatives. They elevate our mood. Our mood becomes elevated by taking tranquilizers. They reduce our tension. That means we tend to feel happy by taking tranquilizers. But they will not induce sleep. They do not induce sleep. That's the difference between sedatives and tranquilizers. Overall, the effect is same. But tranquilizers are not going to induce any sleep. Whereas sedatives are going to induce sleep. The examples of sedatives and tranquilizers are barbiturates. It's a class of drugs. There are many drugs which come under the category of barbiturates. And another class comes as an example of sedatives and tranquilizers. That is benzodiazepines. The, uh, the very uh, known example is diazepam. That's the drug which belongs to this class of drugs. That's called benzodiazepines. Both barbiturates and benzodiazepines, they are sedatives and tranquilizers. The second class of the drugs are opiate narcotics, which are also called opioids. They are very important for us to understand. These drugs, opiate narcotics or opioids, these drugs are obtained from, they are derived from opium. Now the question is, where from we get opium? Opium is basically obtained from the pods. It's obtained from the unripe fruit of poppy plant. So you have to remember poppy plant. Poppy plant is the plant from which we obtain opium. So opium itself is a drug. Okay, where from we get opium? We get opium from the pods, from the unripe fruits of poppy plant. The scientific name of poppy plant is Papaver somniferum. You have to remember it. it it's being asked in examinations that where from opium is derived. It's derived from Papaver somniferum, which is poppy plant. And which part of the plant is taken? It's the pot, it's the unripe fruit which is taken. Uh, and from that, uh, you know, what is obtained is opium. So opium itself is opiate narcotic. This compound itself is a drug. And then we get some, you know, derivatives of opium, which, which we produce synthetically, okay? So some synthetic derivatives of opium also act as drugs. So opium itself and its synthetic derivatives are opioid narcotics or opioids, okay? That's very important. Now, what, where, what do these drugs uh, do in our body? These drugs, once these opioid drugs are taken by the individuals, these drugs bind to special receptors which are called opioid receptors. These opioid receptors are located in our central nervous system as well as in our gastrointestinal tract. 
So both of the systems are going to be affected. So opioid receptors located on in CNS and GID are going to bind, uh, you know, opioid drugs. And then they are going to cause their effect. What sort of effect they produce is that they also suppress. They were also depressing the nervous activity. They are also going to act as depressants. They will also suppress or we can use the word depress the brain activity. That's what is called narcosis. If a drug is depressing the activity of the brain, we call it a narcotic drug. Okay. So this state is called narcosis because the brain activity is lowered. It's depressed. The same drugs could be used to relieve pain. They are pain relievers. Pain relieving drugs are called analgesics. So opioids are analgesics. See, these drugs have therapeutic value also. The problem is whether we are taking them for therapeutic purposes under the prescription of a doctor or we are abusing these drugs or we are taking them in an illegal, in an unethical manner. That's the problem. So these, they are otherwise used as pain relievers. They could be used for persons suffering from depression or people suffering from different types of disorders. These drugs would be prescribed. That is, in that case, that is the normal clinical application of these drugs. But somebody is taking them uh, for um, attaining that state of relaxation, which is a false relaxation, which is not the actual state of relaxation. It's giving that individual a kind of um, uh, false belief that he or she starts feeling, uh, you know, something uh, very special out of the world we can say so what do anyways what do these drugs do they suppress brain activity that means they cause narcosis they help in relieving pain that means they are analgesics they reduce the anxiety that means they are also anti-anxiety drugs they lower now see they they are reducing the activities they even lower the blood pressure they can be used for treating uh, treating hypertension also they reduce the blood pressure they reduce reduce the breathing rate also and that's the very important point. They tend to develop a sensation, a feeling of well-being in an individual. A person starts feeling, uh, you know, very well after taking these drugs. But this is a false feeling. This is not a natural feeling. A feeling of well-being and cheerfulness. A person feels very, very happy after taking these drugs, if he, if he is abusing these drugs. That state is called euphoria. Okay, why drug abusers are abusing these drugs to enter into that state of euphoria where they feel cheerful, they feel extremely happy, but that is a temporary happiness. After the effect of the drug is gone, that state of happiness is gone and they, they start feeling frustrated to um, reach back to that state of euphoria for which they can uh, steal, uh, you know, they can go for uh, robbing anything from um, somebody in order to purchase the drugs because all this is going to then uh, cause economic economical problems, social issues and whatnot. Now, how are these drugs taken? If we talk about opioids, how are they introduced? They can be taken by injection, means that the individual can directly introduce these drugs by making a solution and injecting it in, into the blood or by snorting through the nose. Now remember, let us talk about some derivatives now. Let's first of all talk about another drug which is obtained from the same opium plant, which is obtained from the same poppy plant, whatever somniferum, that is morphine. Morphine is obtained from the latex. It is obtained from the latex of pot poppy plant, okay? And that morphine is 10 times more stronger than opium. That means the same effects are generated by morphine, but 10 times more strong. That means 10 times much stronger state of euphoria a person will experience by taking morphine. Now you have another thing, another opioid that's called heroin. Heroin is basically a modified form of morphine. So these are prepared in lab. Heroin is obtained by performing chemical treatment of morphine. What, what sort of chemical treatment? You have to perform acetylation at the addition of acetyl groups. So heroin is obtained by acetylation of morphine. So if you take morphine, it's morphine. But if you take diacetyl morphine, this is heroin. Okay. So heroin is, uh, as far as the physical properties are concerned, it is bitter in taste. It's white in color. It doesn't have any odor, no smell. It's odorless. It is a crystalline compound. Now, Another important thing, heroin is 20% more stronger than 
opium. So opium was the normal thing, the norm, uh, actual opioid. We came to know that morphine is 10 times stronger than opium. And then we came to heroin, which is diacetyl morphine, which is the modified form of morphine. This heroin is 20 times more effective, more stronger than opium. So this is about opioid narcotics. So the examples, you, uh, we came across some examples over here. Now I have placed examples in this green box. You have opium itself obtained from the pod of the poppy plant. You have morphine which is obtained from the latex of the poppy plant. You have heroin. The other term for heroin is smack. It's, it's, it's locally, its street name is smack. Heroin or smack, which is what? Which is diacetyl morphine. Okay. Even you can talk about brown sugar. This is a very common term you, you might be hearing. Brown sugar. It is also a modified form of morphine. It is diacetyl morphine hydrochloride. So morphine is the actual compound. Then you get diacetyl morphine, which you call heroin or smack. Then you have diacetyl morphine hydrochloride, which you call brown sugar okay and there is one more opioid drug that's called codeine codeine is uh, present in cough syrups you might have heard or you might have seen in movies and all that people uh, take up so many cough syrups in just one go 10 to 20 cough syrup bottles are being uh, gulped by some individual the reason is those cough syrups contain this opioid drug that is codeine and this codeine binds to the opioid receptors in central nervous system and produces these effects in it in the now let us talk about the third class of the drugs the third class is stimulants opposite to the above two classes stimulants are going to stimulate the nervous system very simple. They were depressing the nervous system. There was depressants. But these are going to stimulate the nervous system. So see, they stimulate the nervous system, activate the nervous system, increase your alertness. You start feeling highly alert. Activity increases. You start feeling energetic. You start performing um, and, you know, activities other than the normal activities you are performing. I don't mean you will start uh, you know, flying in the sky. No. Uh, your pace, your speed, your uh, passion will start in increasing because of these stimulants. You will uh, start feeling more excited. That state of excitement will be there in your body after taking these stimulants. Now, the best example of stimulants are coca alkaloids. Uh, coca alkaloids, or which is generally called cocaine. Cocaine is a white crystalline, white crystalline alkaloid. It's obtained from what? It's obtained from the leaves of another plant. You have to remember this plant now. It is erythroxylum coca. So, cocaine, you can call it coca alkaloid. It is itself a white crystalline alkaloid obtained from the leaves of erythroxylum coca. It is a stimulant. That means this compound, coca alkaloid or cocaine specifically, is a stimulant. If you take this cocaine, you will start feeling highly excited. Your alertness will increase. Your brain activity will increase. That's not going to be beneficial for you in any, any of the cases because this is this is. Mm, other than the normal thing, what there, what uh, sort of excitement levels are kept in our body by Almighty Allah, that's normal. Something below that, something above that, it's both uh, problematic. If you are, you know, in a state of depression, that is problematic. If you are highly overexcited, then you are suffering from some personality disorder. When you are in a normal state without uh, taking any drugs, at that point of time, you are absolutely normal, okay? So now, uh, if, these drugs, uh, cocaine specifically, what it does, it interferes with your central nervous system. See what it does. It interferes with the transport of neurotransmitter. Now, this is very important. There's a neurotransmitter which you have to remember, that is dopamine. This cocaine interferes with the transport of this neurotransmitter, dopamine. Very, very important to understand. 
what normally happens in our brain is that uh, once we perform some activity which we like suppose i am feeling hungry now i will i would wish to eat something once i will be given something to eat my brain will start developing a sort of reward system my brain already has a reward system there will be certain nerve impulses generated in my brain which will give me that sensation of happiness that i will feel joyous that i am eating something so after you drink or you eat or you get some award or you get some recognition whenever you do something which is you know rewarding your brain already has a rewarding system by which your brain feels makes you feel happy makes you feel delighted how this happens it's very interesting now you have a, a sequence of uh, you know uh, neurons in your brain signals are to be transported from one neuron to other the neuron suppose the same signal which is going to give you that sensation of uh, happiness now how will this uh, neuron transfer its uh, impulse to the next neuron in between there is a gap but near this gap transportation will be done by means of neurotransmitters from one neuron what are released are neurotransmitters one such neurotransmitter is dopamine so this neuron in which impulse is generated at its terminal point neurotransmitter dopamine is released dopamine now comes into the synapse it comes into the synaptic cleft now this dopamine binds to the dendron of next neuron once it binds to the dendron 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 is the singular form you have many dendrons which are called dendrites once the neurotransmitter dopamine binds to the dendrites of the next neuron impulse is generated in this neuron in this way information travels in your brain specifically this information has to travel from the lower part of your brain to the prefrontal cortex which will give you that state of enjoyment state of happiness but now who is the you know, sole uh, worker here is dopamine if it would not have been released you will not have been able to get that sensation of happiness now what if this dopamine uh, after performing its job normally it has to go back inside the uh, neuron which has secreted it earlier this dopamine has to be taken back but you are drug suppose if you are taking this cocaine it blocks there are different mechanisms but it can block the transporter which can transport the dopamine back into the neuron now what is going to happen dopamine is going to stay there between the two neurons for longer period of time and the stimulus is going to be generated for longer period of time your brain is going to remain active for longer period of time because the stimulant is there dopamine is there dopamine is actually there but who is not allowing this dopamine to go back to its original destination is the drug is is cocaine either it is either some drugs can block the transporters not allowing the dopamine to go back so that the effect will come down or some drugs what they do is they increase the secretion of dopamine excessive dopamine is going to keep you in an elevated state of alertness it's going to keep you excited it's going to keep you highly energetic that's why uh, we call them stimulants so normal thing is normal almighty allah has kept this plan that even whenever he wants uh, we people to be happy already there is a set mechanism which will be activated these neurons will work dopamine will be secreted uh, the effect will be gone within some uh, seconds and then will be normal so that next time we will again feel this sort of happiness but when somebody starts abusing the drug they get a heightened they get a they get an elevated uh, you know uh, you know uh, kick because of the drug which which lets the dopamine stay there to give a more uh, you know expanded effect, effect of the dopamine now next time the same person is not going to generate the same effect because of this amount which he was using earlier next time he has to take more a quantity of the drug to get the same level of excitement to get to enter into the same state of euphoria which becomes problematic so it's not when we say that we will take cocaine and we will enter into a state of happiness no it, it, that happiness is actually disastrous because it's not going to last for longer period of time and it's highly addictive what is normal our brain's normal reward system is the normal thing anything which is going to hamper it making it more uh, elevated or making it depressed both of the, these uh, things are going to be problematic for the person
Now, how is cocaine taken? It is usually snorted. That means it is taken by the uh, respiratory tract through nose. It causes the sense of euphoria. Obviously, uh, people after taking cocaine, it has been seen that they say uh, that we can hear the colors or we can see the sound. It, it it sounds totally absurd. It sounds totally rubbish to a normal person like you and me. We are normal human beings. If somebody will tell us that I can see uh, the sound or I can hear the colors, we'll say, how come it's possible? It's not possible to uh, see the sound. But they they think like this in a state of, they are in a state of euphoria. Euphoria is an elevated state of, you know, um, uh, this kind of uh, cheerfulness where they have extremely uh, happy and in a in a in a different kind of uh, uh, environment where their uh, mind is hyperactive. That state is euphoria, and they start assuming, they start creating their own imaginations, very rapid imaginations, in which they tend to, you know, think like they can see the um, sound, they can hear the colors, which actually is uh, totally uh, rubbish. And if uh, somebody will take excessive do dosage of these stimulants, so, so somebody if, if, if someone takes excessive dosage of cocaine or other stimulants, they will face hallucinations. They will face illusions and they will face delusions. They are called hallucinations. Examples of stimulants are, we have already seen cocaine. Cocaine is also called crack. Now, what is, what is the difference between crack and cocaine? Crack is the purified form of cocaine. Uh, and uh, it's also called coke. So cocaine, crack, coke is the same thing. They are obtained from what? They are obtained from the plant. Name of the plant is erythrozylum coca. Even caffeine is a form of stimulant. Caffeine is normally found in tea, in coffee. It keeps you alert for a longer period of time. You take it in examinations. You, you know that you can take up uh, cups of coffee and you will not feel sleepy because there is caffeine which is going to do the same thing. It's going to keep you uh, hyperactive. Uh, even uh, you can find caffeine in Coca-Cola also. So in Coca, it's present. Amphetamine is also a stimulant. Methamphetamine is also a stimulant. MDMA is also a stimulant. It is a, Its street name is ecstasy. Last but not the least, we have hallucinogens, the fourth class of the uh, drugs. These drugs are uh, very, uh, you know, uh, disastrous. They cause illusions, you know, false imaginations, illusions and delusions in an individual. After taking hallucinog hallucinogens, person creates uh, illusions and he has uh, different types of delusions. Their normal feelings are changed, their normal perceptions, how we look at the things. If we if we look at, suppose this is a board, okay, this is a board to me, but if a person has taken hallucinogen, they will have a different perspective of this board. They, they will make their own, uh, you know, illusions of this uh, particular thing after taking the drug. Now, what hallucinogens are chemically? Chemically, they are cannabinoids. Cannabinoids is basically a class of compounds which is obtained from uh, flower tops, leaves or resins of a plant. Here you have to remember this plant, Cannabis sativa. So Cannabis sativa from the uh, name of the same plant is derived with the term cannabinoids. So Cannabis sativa, uh, its parts, which part? You have to take its resin, you have to take its leaves, you have to take its flower tops. From them are obtained the compounds called cannabinoids and these cannabinoids are hallucinogens. They cause illusions and delusions in an individual. They change the feelings and perceptions of the individual. These cannabinoids can be taken by inhalation. That means they can be either you know smoked and inhaled. The compounds, volatile compounds could be inhaled or they can be taken orally also. Now look at the examples. Examples of hallucinogens are very important. From cannabis that means from cannabis sativa, uh, from its leaves, resins and flower tops, what are produced uh, is ganja, charas, hashish, marijuana and bhang. All of these four, one, two, three, four, five things, all of these, uh, you know, substances contain cannabinoids. And where from these things are, uh, you know, obtained, where from we produce these things, we produce these things by processing. Cannabis sativa leaves, flower tops and resins. That means the point is that uh, the plant which is very important over here is cannabis sativa. 
Now, which part of the plant is very important? Its leaves, its flower tops, and its resins. And in different ways, in different preparatory styles, we can prepare ganja from it, charas from it, hashish, marijuana, and bhang. And all of these uh, things can be taken orally or they can be inhaled, depending upon the different category what they are. Uh, uh, they can be orally also taken in liquid preparation or they can be inhaled, they can be smoked, and they can generate these effects. Other than uh, this, we have LSD. LSD, its full form is lysergic acid diethyl amide. It's not obtained from any plant. It's also a hallucinogen. It's obtained from an ergot fungus. Very important. Uh, the name of the fungus is uh, Clevisa purpura. This is the fungus from which LSD is obtained. A very potent, a very potent uh, hallucinogen. Atropine and belladonna are also hallucinogens. They are obtained from Atropa belladonna. It's a plant. It's not a fungus. This is a plant. Atropine and belladonna have therapeutic applications. Atropine is used by ophthalmologists. Belladonna is also used in Ayurvedic medicine. So they have uh, applications, but they come under hallucinogens. Even the Tura plant. The Tura plant also has hallucination properties. So in, in this case, in hallucinogens, you have to remember about the plant cannabis sativa from which you obtain cannabinoids in the form of ganja, charas, hashish, marijuana and bhang. You have to remember this ergot fungus. The name of the fungus is uh, Clavicep purpura from which what is obtained is LSD. You have to remember Atropa belladonna. It's a plant again. Okay, it's a plant again from which what is obtained? Atropine and belladonna. And you have to remember that the Dura plant also has hallucination properties. So this was all about uh, drug and drug abuse. Which is the, uh, you know, uh, age group which is more attracted towards drug abuse is the most vulnerable age group that is adolescents adolescents because they are already in that phase of teenage adolescence age starts from 12 years it ends up at 19 what we call teenage in this age ch children are basically uh, stepping into adulthood they were earlier children now they are set stepping into adulthood and this phase of their life is very crucial because already a lot of physiological changes a lot of hormonal changes are taking place inside their body and they are always uh, in want of excitement they are adventurous in this phase of life so that's why in that adventurous state of mind they tend to do uh, they tend to uh, you know get attracted towards drugs also so proper counseling and uh, you know proper uh, uh, guidance of children is very very important in this particular adolescence age so that they will uh, be aware about the harmful effects of these drugs because they are finally going to impair they're going to damage uh, one's physical functions physiological functions and psychological functions they do generate a state of euphoria but that is all temporary and that is all disastrous for uh, the carrier for the health for the family of that drug abuser so on this note, I'll, I'll take your leave. Inshallah, we'll meet again with the next topic. Till then, take care of yourselves. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.